In the spring 2023 issue of the ACLU's National Magazine, contributing writer Charlie Locke documents the continuing discipline disparity that attaches to schooling opportunities of black and brown children, and specifically to black and brown students with disabilities. Black students with disabilities were suspended or expelled at twice the rate of white and Latinx students with disabilities. National data, supported by case reports that highlight district and administrator insistence on lowering academic achievement expectations for these students, continues to offer a dismal view of progress in achieving education equity in this country. As documented in Locke's article, Separate and Unequal, for too many students, positive change in their education lives most often requires that parents leave a school, district, and even a state to find responsive educational opportunities for their special needs children, and in many cases, for black and brown children in general. The ACLU's work in Delaware and states around the country has forced litigation and state court decisions that direct state education agencies to remedy the situation. We have captured work that is underway in a model school environment. The Charter School of Newcastle, referenced going forward as CSNC, located in Newcastle, Delaware. We are providing a snapshot of how schools establish and embrace responsive approaches that nurture achievement motivation for all students, regardless of family characteristics and special learning needs. Good morning, fifth grade. Good morning, good morning. Good job. Good to see. Good morning, Mr. Terry. Happy Friday, you guys. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Approximately 40% of CSNC students are low income, and most students entering kindergarten have little or no preschool experience. In many school environments, these students are at high risk for being identified as special needs with socialization, behavioral, and language cognitive deficits. It is through conscious efforts based on clearly identified beliefs that students and their families matter that in 2022, CSNC identified only 11.8% of students as special needs, below the state average of 17.5%. We believe that community matters. We are a family. Hard work pays off. Our scholars have unlimited potential. Each day provides opportunities for learning and growing. I've seen students come in from other environments that um, have certain records, so to speak. They really struggled to be a part of the community because they, simple things like they, maybe they weren't heard or maybe they were being shut out or maybe there was a, a misconception about who they were. They come here and the simple things that we put in place such as systems, now they have a, a routine, they have something that they're, they're focused on. Now they're thinking through the lens of positive um, deposits that they're making. Watching that student transform almost like it's a totally different person, like parents saying like, wow, this is not my son. Because at another school, you know, that student was, you know, my son was getting in trouble. My, my son was struggling. But here, my son is thriving. My son feels seen and my son is doing well. And that speaks to the system because it's very easy for us to look at, you know, my scholars that have been here. But when we get someone else from another environment that comes in and we see that we've been able to transform them, that's when I know that it counts and this is working. A walk through the hallways and visits to classrooms provide significant opportunities to observe fair discipline and inclusive practices that foster education equity. The CSNC model illustrates practices that are defined in our Fair Discipline online toolkit. ACLU Delaware has made significant investments in education equity and safe schools in the state. We have taken a more granular look at elements of equity. 
These are defined in research that examines the essential value of school climate and social-emotional factors that influence achievement and reflect at the school building and classroom levels a school's commitment to inclusive practices that allow all students opportunities to thrive. This work has proceeded by responding to a key question that should establish a framework for working within any school community that seeks to craft inclusive school practices. What are the key elements that schools should address to ensure equity? Many in education pursue equity through single dimensions, with the most prevalent being budget and financial resources. While funding is important, spending levels alone do not produce equitable access to high-quality educational opportunities. We must concern ourselves with how the dollars are spent. First and foremost, there must be a shared understanding, collaborative planning, and action that involves school board members, state and district leaders, civil rights advocates, families, educators, and certainly students themselves. Our equity and safe schools work aligns with the guidance provided by the National Education Trust and Alliance for Resource Equity 2021, given their 10 dimensions of education resource equity. In selecting a Delaware model for examining inclusive school practices, we distilled the guidance into six key areas of focus that CSNC educators and board members agree are useful as they reflect established beliefs and aims of the CSNC community. CSNC excels in many of the key areas of focus, with notable commitment to establishing an inclusive school culture that reflects the essential value of keeping all students in classes and in school. The CSNC model is instructive. School communities can reduce the frequency of in-school and out-of-school suspensions by adopting responsive school interactions that convey expectations that students belong in school and in their classes. In 2022, the in-school suspension rate in the state averaged 5%, and the reported rate for CSNC is less than 2%. Yesterday we had a conversation. Remember I told you, if you speak good things in atmosphere, good things happen. When you speak negative things, those negative things happen. So we learned that we're not going to speak negative things, right? We will speak good things in existence, right? Yeah. So what is, give me a good word today. What is something positive you want to do today? I want to, I want to not get in trouble. Okay. How, again, what does it take for you not to get in trouble? Be respectful and also be kind and do my work. Another thing that used to bother me um, back when I was in the classroom was this um, idea of just um, punitive measures. Let me go into the classroom and just move your name down on the board or you're in green but now you're in red. A student can't explain what they did wrong. So how are you developing a student into a natural citizen if red doesn't actually correlate to the real world. So I knew that if I were ever in a school leadership position um, and I had influence to make a difference in the school that we would actually only focus on positive behavior, positive decision making, because I think a student can wrap their head around this idea of like, what can I do better? A student really struggles. It can feel very traumatic and defeating when a student's thinking about what I did wrong all day. Let's focus on what you did well. Data indicate the use of focused efforts to create a fluid process that employs appropriate strategies that target development of growth mindsets, attitudes, and behaviors within the school community. I look at restorative practice as a proactive measure. You want to get there before the behavior begins. And if the behavior happens, that student needs to understand and reflect on what led to that behavior so that they don't engage in that behavior again. So I think one of the misconceptions about restorative practices is that there's no consequences. That's not the case. Restorative practices allows for that relationship to be repaired so that it's preven preventing future consequences or future behavior infractions from happening. Inclusive practices increase opportunities for students to strengthen social and academic skills as they set achievement goals through a range of self-regulatory activities. Well, we believe in relationships, and we believe that relationships really drive the culture of the school. 
So I would say first, starting with the emphasis on building those relationships with the students, being willing to have conversations when something happens that disrupts the school community. So just from a base understanding, we started from that mindset. Relationships are important and restoring relationships are important. And then from that, built-in systems to accompany that. So restorative conferences, mediations. At this point, we're getting to the space where students request mediations if they're having an issue with the peer, or even a teacher will request a mediation if they've seen that they're having a conflict of some sort with a student. So that has really kind of taken off because students and teachers recognize how important it is to have an environment that where relationships are prioritized.